this is a fully functioning modem. I'm going to break it so that you know what it looks like broken, and then I'm going to show you how to fix it. This is malt liquor. Pour it on here, it's going to break it, as we all know, but you can revive it. Simultaneously, dust will do the same thing. Dust will have the exact same symptoms. So, here we go. See how they're all solid? No longer fully functioning. And it's making a kind of a whistling noise. So, stick with me. I'll show you how to fix it. First thing you got to do is disassemble it. Uh, this one looks as though it's pressed together or clipped together in the manufacturing process and you have to break it to get it open. But when you remove these feet, which are not easy to remove, there's your Allen wrench. I start them out with either a 2 millimeter or a 5 64th and then I keep them going with a 3 30 seconds. So the first one doesn't fit very well you kind of have to hold it at an angle and you'll feel it go and then the 330 seconds once it's loose I can kind of jam in there and keep going but you know whatever model you have is going to be completely different and this model number is below this video so get it disassembled I'll show you what to do next alright on this particular model I have the screws out and you gently take it apart you don't want to force anything This is your circuit board, obviously. What's basically happening is these little pins are short-circuiting. So, as you can see on this one, fluid is all over this microprocessor. To remedy that, you need isopropyl alcohol, aka rubbing alcohol, 90% or greater. I've never used anything less than 90%. Uh, if that's all you got, I am not going to say try it, but if you're feeling, you know, lucky, go for it. So all you do is you very gently scrub down the circuit board. You want to get all those little feet of that microprocessor, your A to D converter. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter. You have amplifiers. You have all kinds of stuff on here. But you just want to, you want to make sure it's nice and clean so that nothing can be short-circuited. Take your time, no rush. If you've got one of those families where everybody just has to have a say in everything, tell them to shut the fuck up. That you got this. So this one's looking pretty good. It doesn't take too long, doesn't take too much. You just want to make sure you got it all nice and good. You don't want to press too hard. You don't want to let the hard plastic hit all your little components on here. If it's old or if it's a not so good connection, it can break it off. And this is Rojas solder, which is very brittle. Rojas is horrible. Whoever said get rid of lead solder was crazy. That stuff works. Rojas doesn't. And if you're arguing with me, why is it that the medical community can still use lead solder? It's because it works. So, once this is done, you got to let it dry. You can take a blow dryer to it. Kind of don't suggest that because of, you know, electron movement, things like that. I don't know if those things are grounded very well. So, the best bet is just to let it dry for 15 minutes, maybe even 5 or 10, this alcohol evaporates very quickly. So I'm going to let this dry. As you can tell right now, this microprocessor doesn't look a mate flat black. It's all shiny. And it's kind of getting to a mate flat black. When the whole, the, when all the black components are mate flat and the green stuff is all dry and everything, then you can reassemble it. But until then, just clean up your plastic bits and get back to it. We're still drying. I cleaned the plastic bits and this is still drying. One thing I forgot to mention, 
do not use a rag, paper towel, anything on this. Anything, any materials. Air is okay blowing on it. That's fine. No paper towels, none of that, because if little pieces get left in here, once again, you're going to have the same problem. So just let it air dry. Be patient. Take your time. Like I said, if somebody's in your ear, tell them to go drink a beer or whatever. So uh, we'll give it a few more minutes. We'll get her back together. So everything's nice and dry now, all three components. Before you test this circuit board, it needs to be in its case. Not necessarily assembled with the screws, but it definitely needs to be shielded from any excess electrons and things like that. So we need to put it back how it was. Excellent. That's power. That's internet. That's router. There you go. And don't let this button fool you either. Fully functioning. Once again, put your screws back in it. Don't forget those. Don't forget your little rubber feet. And there you go. Any questions, feel free to let me know.